tonight's program, each candidate will be given three questions to respond to. Each question, they will have two minutes to respond to the individual question. After all three panels have asked their questions, you will get one minute to explain why you should be elected counselor at large. Now, it's very important that we stay within the two minute, one minute frame. And if there are candidates, uh, members here, this is not a rally, it's an informational uh, forum. So please do not interrupt them when they're speaking, show courtesy, uh, there'll be time after the program's over for you to talk to the candidates again. So the first panel tonight will be Shana Barnes, Jose Rodriguez, and Wynn Fowler. You will be the first panel, and your questions will be asked by William Brewer. If we could have the, all the candidates who are uh, running for <coughs> election sit up here, and the first panel sit in the first row. Lead the way to important community service. 
We have participated throughout the city in discussions with other religious groups on everything from diversity, equal rights, marched against violence, and many others. Ann Temple was a charter member of BIC, which works to promote equality. This building has held BIC conventions, candidate nights, and debates through the years, has collected over a thousand pints of blood to help save lives. What I'm most proud of is that we remember our past. Four times in the last 25 years, we have wanted the Tuskegee EMN to help tell their story along with countless times honoring the survivors of the Holocaust, remember their, those lost. It has been an honor for our temple to participate in an all the worthy programs here in Brockton. Tonight is the last public forum being held at 479 Tory Street. The building will be sold shortly. It is with sadness that we close this proud chapter in the history of our temple, but it is an honor to work with the ladies and gentlemen of the NAACP in having this forum for you tonight. May Temple Beth Amuna and the NAACP both have a rebirth and continue fighting for what we believe in. Now we'll hear from the president of the Brockton branch of the NAACP, Stephen Bernard. We're honored to welcome you all here tonight to the Temple Beth Amuna and the Brotherhood of uh, Temple Beth Amuna. We're glad to be tonight. We should all be smiling and celebrating you this evening. So I was going to tell a story from my friend the Ball Shintol, but decided not to because I figured it might go over your head. You probably, would, probably wouldn't understand. So instead, we'll go with these words. Blacks and Jews have many things in common. One of those things is their sense of humor. Blacks' sense of humor is sometimes based in self-deprecation. I'm told that Jewish humor is sometimes based in self-deprecation. So let me tell you a story. This story is about the brotherhood of hell. The Brotherhood of Hell decided that they were going to move their temple. So on the next morning, the full Brotherhood of the temple came down to the temple, and they got along the side of the wall of the temple, and they started to push the temple in the direction of its new location. They pushed for hours and hours. Sooner or later, they got a little tired, and they stopped, and they took off their coats, and they placed their coats behind them. And then they went back to push the temple in the direction of its new location. After a while, one brother said to another, I wonder how far we've gone. Another brother looked over his shoulder and said, pretty far. I can't see our coats. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the temple is closing. And that's very sad. They may be as moving as far away as Randolph. But we here in Brockton want them to know that we have and hold your warmth and comfort. We have your coats. And we want you to always know that you're welcome here in Brockton. Another similarity between Jews and blacks is our appreciation for the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible and in the Torah. It speaks of the purpose and the meaning of life, the mystery and the meaning of life. And I'm told that it's ceremonious on the seventh day of the, tep the, of the uh, Feast of the Tabernacle, the Sephiroth, I believe it's called, that it's traditional or ceremonious to read Ecclesiastes. <coughs> I'm particularly fond of Ecclesiastes 3, and you all know it. To all things there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. And verse 22 states that, Therefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall come after him? Temple Bethlehem and the Brotherhood of Temple Bethlehem, we are grateful to God 
for bringing us to this season in our lives. Temple of Bethlehem Unit and the Brotherhood of Temple of Bethlehem Unit, we're grateful for joining with you and partnering with you to bring this public service, this celebration of our candidates who are going to run for office to serve all of us. And Temple Bethlehem Unit, the least we can do, the most we can do, and all of us on my cue could say thank you to Temple Bethlehem Unit. I'd like all of us on my cue to say Temple Bethlehem Unit loud enough so the lights on the shirt seats will twinkle. Ready? Thank you, Temple Bethlehem Unit, and welcome. I'd like to introduce the timer who will keep track of the time and will announce uh, at the one minute and a half time that it's a, you have a half minute to go, 30 seconds. And he'll announce again when you have 15 seconds to go. And then when he says time, that's when we ask you to be respectful, stop talking. Sit down. Thank you. Now, Bo Marrow is our timer. Uh, you will hear his audible voice twice when you get up to speak. Uh, and when he says time, please be respectful. Now, the first uh, questioner is William Brewer. He's to my left, and he will ask questions of the first three panelists. My question, Mr. Rodriguez, will be the first speaker, is with the number of shootings on the streets of Broadway, what strategies would you like to see implemented to address this crisis? First one. Well, first of all, I just want to you know, thank the folks here at the Temple and the NAACP for holding this. Um, I've said this often, and I'm going to say it again. I honestly believe that the issues that we have here in the city of Brockton is a community issue. It's not an issue that can be solved and solved by police and police alone. It's something that we need to work together as a community. Uh, it's clear to, to everybody that we now have more police in the streets than we've ever had before. So if the answer was more police, we wouldn't have the issues that we're having. I believe the men and women in the police department, they do a wonderful job. Crime in this city gets solved, but I am a little worried about preventing crime. I want to work on crime prevention, and that's why I advocate for community forums where we actually bring community and community people together to discuss these issues because throwing money and throwing police at a problem to me is not going to solve this issue and I believe that only we as Brocktonians can solve this issue. I'm actually supposed to be at a wake because my uh, uncle passed away and there's a wake for him tonight on Court Street. But I'm here because I want to make sure that you know that I care about the city. Um, I took the time away from my own family to be here with you because this is an important, an important time in our city, in our history. Um, I've said this all along that I, I went to City Hall as a city councilor not necessarily to get along with anybody. I went there to represent the voices of the, of the people in this community. And if it meant getting along with some individuals, I got along with the individuals. But at the same time, I went there not necessarily to make friends or to get along with the people there because a lot of the folks in this community don't necessarily want us to do that. They want us to go out and represent their best interests. And that's what I've done. 
There's not a single one of us that doesn't want a safe street, a, a good school, uh, a, a good looking neighborhood. Not a single person that's running for office doesn't want that. But the important thing is what I've said, is that we as Rocktonians, we need to start working together as one. I mean, I hear it all the time, together we can, together we will, and all this other stuff. But believe it or not, if you sit down and think about it, it really works. Because we've got a community that is as diverse as diversity can be, but there's a lack of diversity input into the problems in this community. And I think we, as elected officials, the citizens of this city, we must, we must call everybody to the table so that we can turn around and make this city a better city. With that, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here tonight, and I also ask for your vote on uh, September 22nd, this coming Tuesday. I'm number two on the ballot. Um, I've been there for you, and I'll continue to be there for you. I appreciate it. clarification. Uh, tonight's round of questions is just one question per group. After that, you have one minute. When we come back around, one minute to explain why uh, the, the vote should vote for you. Okay, the question at the end is, with the number of shootings on the streets of Brogdon, what strategies would you like to see implemented to address this crisis? Thank you very much for um, holding this forum, and thank you for that question. I actually met with the chief of police yesterday, and um, that wasn't the first time that I've actually implored that, that uh, kind of strategy in addressing some of the problems that we have in our city and on our streets. I met with Chief Gohm several times when he was our chief, and I also met with Chief Hayden several times when he was also our chief, just to make sure that in my role, in my capacity as representing the residents of the city of Brockton, I made sure that I kept my fingers on the pulse of what we were doing in the streets and where our police officers are. 
it's difficult being the last one to answer this question because I'll have to say that my, my colleagues and friends in government, they've actually said some really good things and I, I agree with all of those things. It makes sense that we have more police officers, absolutely. It also makes sense that these same police officers get back out on the street and start walking the beat. It makes sense for our motorcycle uh, unit to start to, to do a little bit more engaging. That's, what they were, that's how I feel that they were put in place for it, to be a little bit more engaging so that they're not like the other officers in the cars, and you can't really see them on their chasing or doing whatever, so that you can actually see their faces, you can engage them, you can flag them down, you can do all, the, all of these kinds of things. And she probably actually did mention that um, they're going to start picking up again with some of the walking beats. Um, two years ago, I believe, we saw an, an influx of the walking beats, especially down on the south side. They're going to be implemented uh, with a little bit more fervor on, in, in the downtown area coming up uh, very soon. So we're going to be seeing those kinds of things. I support our Boston Police. They recently just endorsed me, and I, I really appreciate them, and I appreciate what they do, because what they do a lot, I, I couldn't do it. I know that I don't have, I don't have that, kind of, thank you. I don't have that kind of um, personality to actually be a police officer and to fight crime, so I appreciate them. So anything that they have to do, the Shots Water program, um, any of those other kinds of technical implementation programs that they put in, thank you. Um, I definitely support. So, and, and I made sure that Chief Crowley knew that. And whatever information that he would need, if they ever need some a resolve or an order to come before the council, I am available to put that forward to make their job easier, so that they can protect us the way that we need to be protected. Thank you. Susan Nicastro, Gary Keith Sr., and Trevor Packett. And your questions will be asked by Patricia Monteith. When you get up to speak, would you please say your name so that the uh, audience will know who's answering the question? We're going to have one minute. What's that? No, stay right where you are. Get more exposed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to sh shift the topic to economic development um, in Brockton. And Susan, what ideas do you have on how we can bring more businesses into the city and how would those plans affect minorities? Thank you for that question, and thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. I've been coming to Temple Beth Amuna for many years for a lecture series um, sponsored by Joe and Leslie Cohen. It's wonderful to be in this room again. How sad that this temple is closing. So the question, that my question this evening has to do with economic development. Wow. A very big question. I believe we need more economic development to bring jobs that pay a living wage to our Brockton residents. Um, I, if I'm elected, or I should say when I'm elected counselor at large to the Brockton City Council, I intend to work with the planning office, the planning and economic <coughs> development office, to partner with them um, to, to make a plan to look for suitable businesses, businesses we can all agree upon and, and get behind to bring jobs to Brockton. Um, now, I don't know if you're all aware of this. Last year, I finished five years on the Brockton Planning Board and two years on the Zoning Board of Appeals. And in that time, I had the opportunity to review a lot of proposed projects in Brockton. By and large, most of them were housing projects for Brockton. I worked very hard to maintain and improve the, the quality of Brockton neighborhoods. And I think it's important that we continue um, to have housing improvement in Brockton. However, I think most of all what we need is commercial development. I would like to see us expand the, the diversity of businesses here. Right now we are home to pharmaceutical businesses and food manufacturing. We are home to auto sales and service. Um, we also have um, a number of smaller businesses, healthcare businesses and hospitals. I would like to see us expand 
our, our uh, presence in those areas. I personally supported the expansion at Massasoit Community College of a new build, building that would train people in the healthcare industry. And I would work with the planning office. I would go to the state house if I had to, to support the delegation in persuading the governor that we need that building to train our people uh, to bring jobs. Thank you. I'm Gary Peach, Sr. Junior. Senior. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, uh, along the area of economic development in Brockton, what ideas do you have for how we can bring more businesses into the city, and how would those plans affect a lot of minorities? First of all, before we can bring any business into this city, the previous question that was asked in the first group basically was about public safety. We cannot attract any new development here into the city. They don't want to come because we do have the crime that we do. So we have to, uh, we have to basically look at our public safety. We have to attack that. We also have to attack um, programs for our youth, okay, because I believe that our youth uh, not being in the programs ties into our public safety. Once we um, attack those areas right there, then we can go out and we can actually look at bringing in um, good uh, economic businesses because this used to be the shoe capital of the world. And I believe that we still have some build businesses sitting right here in Stoke and uh, we can bring back shoe companies. We have the buildings that were already uh, set up for those and zoned for those. And um, I think that with the right with the public safety being in the right area, we can actually attract some viable um, businesses, commercial-based business like that. The other thing is that as far as minorities go, we can no longer just keep opening up little mom and pop stores and, and parking garages. We're better than that. Okay, this is Brockton. Again, this is the shoe city of the, of the world. We need to go after commercial-based businesses. I think the, um, the mayor is working to do that. What he needs is a city council that is seated there that's actually not going to go against him and not say no, but to say how we can bring in these businesses. Um, we have one of the city councilors that actually went out and brought in Market Basket and brought in uh, a couple of other businesses. So you have to go and knock on doors and you have to tell them who you are and what you're looking to do. Offer them something that's attractable to them and see if we can get them into our city. that they need to 
thrive here in the great city of Brockton, then we're really not doing them any good. Uh, so as far as economic development goes, I think in the next two years, if I'm elected, I will be able to attract new businesses as well as keep the older uh, businesses that have longevity here in the city. Thank you. The next panel will be panel number three, Robert Sullivan, Adeus Pierre, and Craig Pino. Your moderator uh, and your questionnaire question will be asked by Janet Travis. Janet? more Haitian, 
more Spanish, more Cavendian, the same opportunity. All we need is education. Because we are one block town. When I become the next, uh, when I become your city councillor, I will advocate for that. The, next, the, the same opportunity for the child in the private school, you should have the same opportunity for my son who go to work on high, who go to public school. That's why we have to work as one. Let's create a safe atmosphere for everybody. Let as a government we need to represent in every every step in the way. Otherwise we always have issues. But if we represent everywhere, we're gonna have a better opportunity because we are one book on That's my vote. Thanks for the question. Uh, it's a great question, and I, I just want to thank uh, the NAACP and Temple Beth and Luna for holding this, this event. Uh, this question kind of ties into the previous two. Uh, Brockton is a very diverse community, and I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a picture of diversity in the, in the city, uh, having, having my mother being Native American and, and, and having a Cape Verdean background. Uh, I, and, and growing up in Brockton, I am, I am the face of Brockton. Um, getting, uh, making sure everyone has a seat at the table, making sure everyone participates, uh, goes into the, the previous questions uh, in community policing, making sure that, that every community is involved in, uh, in policing and helping the police uh, keep our neighborhoods safe. In economic development, opening up opportunities uh, for, for, for families, uh, for, for individuals, for, for investors uh, of, of every background, uh, making sure that there's an opportunity for for, uh, for for people to succeed in their in their businesses in the city of Brockton. Uh, that is is the key to making th making things uh, uh, great and safe again in the city of, in the city of Brockton. I see uh, Jack Lally and John Drozinska sitting in front here, uh, both candidates for Ward Six. Uh, we 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 like to see uh, development in in the village uh, and development around our train stations. Uh, we we we. we uh, we're missing the boat. We're missing opportunities for development, uh, and, and that, that's that's the way we can we can uh, get more people involved and making sure everyone has a seat at the table. Uh, I don't believe in giving anyone any special treatment. I treat everyone the same, whether whether it's me, whether it's whether it's uh, former Mayor Farwell or, or Councilor uh, Every everyone everyone gets a fair shot, and everyone is treated the same. Thank you very much. Predictive analytics would benefit public safety immediately. Um, we really need to be able to go somewhere on the website and know where the crime is happening. I understand, I've talked to activists in the community, and they say we can't really find any of this data online. We have to record it manually and figure it out, um, yet the FBI has 
this data, you know, when they do their analysis. So I think this there needs to be more transparency in opening up the uh, the channels a little more, not sort of keeping it keeping it, you know, withholding it from the community because we're afraid, you know, property values might might go down because there's been, you know, it's reported on the website that there's been twelve break ins on the street. Um, we we just need to integrate technology into every department better and alleviate some of these mundane tasks that everybody keeps doing. Take away the boring stuff that people are doing, automate it, and allow more productive things to happen um, across all the time. Technology is the way to go. Invest in technology. That's all. The question was, once again, the city has between two and three million dollars in proposition two and a half funds that are available to use this year for possible hiring of teachers, maintaining the sports program, hiring police and fire. As a council at large, how would you suggest we use these funds? Thank you, sir. Um, I'm Michael Zarella, I'm running for city council at large. This is a great question. I'd like to thank Temple Bethlehem Union. I'd like to thank the NAACP for hosting this forum tonight. Um, that proposition two and a half money, as far as police, everybody knows we need more police. We can't rely on the state police. They're here part time. They're here almost every night. We cannot rely on the FBI. They're in the city, but they're focusing on one individual, maybe one group at a time. We need more police. We know that. Our teachers, we had s almost 70 teachers got pink slips this year. I'd like to see all those teachers rehired. I'd like to see more teachers, definitely more programs for our youth. Uh, I know in other, in other towns, um, a lot of the parents bear the burden of the cost in, for the after school programs, sports, and definitely, you know, if we can afford to provide that for our youth, then by all means, we need to keep that money going for that. Also, if uh, we need also to to give to businesses. Um, if we can get these businesses here, I'd like to see some biotech firms coming. I'd like to see some money used to court these businesses. Um, more PR being spent. Um, I know we have a downtown city planner. I'd like to see more work come from that. Maybe hire him an assistant, if possible. If anything, definitely, I'd like the question was proposed, police, teachers, fire. Also, firefighters deserve this new truck that they've been wanting. Uh, I believe it costs about a million dollars, and if the money from the Proposition 2 and a half cannot cover that, then put that to a vote. The firefighters deserve this new truck. Um, thank you. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to keep any more time. I know we have, tw um, I think, 11 more candidates that need to get their time out to say why they'll be the next city councilor. Thank you. One minute answer by each candidate, starting from the back and moving to the front. You'll be up first to give you one minute. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, shouldn't have sat down. Um, so I'm going to be really short-winded here. I would hope that you would elect me as your next city councilor because I have the background and knowledge in crime. I am a correction officer at MCIC Junction at Walpole. I work with criminals every day, and my one of the main things that we do up there is we try to reduce recidivism. It's funny because a lot of these criminals. You know, being I work at a state facility, they're not all from Brockton. People think that this this problem is just a Brockton thing. It's not. Um, you go to any other city in the Commonwealth, we have this problem. It seems like Brockton is has the most crime because because of where we are on the South Shore. There's in Plymouth County, we're the only town that has this type of crime problem. Please elect me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna give the mic over to somebody else. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for having us here tonight. My name is Gary Keats, senior.
Zero, number 10 on your ballot for City Council at large. Um, I'm asking you for your vote uh, next Tuesday on the 22nd. And uh, the reason I'm asking for that is that I'm a 25 year resident here in the city of Brockton along with my wife and my family that's here right now. I have an extensive law enforcement background and um, I also have, I've held offices in um, uh, self-help Head Start and I have an idea how to bring this city forward. I can work with any of the councils that are in there and that's something that my personality actually is. I can bridge that gap. However, my model for this right now is that I am Brockton. And what that means basically is that I've been poor, I have made good money, I've been homeless, I've been on welfare, I've been on food stamps. I can relate to every person that walks within the borders of our city and everybody, no matter if they're homeless, laying in the, in the uh, doorways at night or whatever, everyone in this city needs representation and I want to represent everyone here within the city of Brockton. I am Brockton and I'm here for you, to fight for you every single day. Thank you very much. teenage sons here in Brockton. I'm very proud to say that I'm a resident of Brockton. I'm an attorney. I've practiced law for more than 30 years. My law practice focuses in real estate and business. City Council looks at a lot of contracts. Um, I, I'm also, as I mentioned earlier, I've just finished last year five years on the Brockton Planning Board and two years on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. I worked very hard in those years to protect and enhance our Brockton neighborhoods. I like your vote because I have the talent, the expertise, I have the passion and the vision to be a counselor at large, and I, I would be honored to serve the city. I'm number nine on the ballot. Please vote. Time. Thank you. My name is Nadius Dier, and I'm a former police officer, and now I'm working for Plymouth County Sheriff Department. I know how to deal with crap. I will fight crap every single day. Please, I'm number five in the ballot. Vote for me, because I will work for you and with you, because I believe we have one city and we need to fight for it. I'm not going anywhere. Like people who are living in this city, I'm living in this city. I will fight for my city. Please, give me your vote. Because if you're tired of, uh, uh, you don't have after school program, if you're tired for giving teach teacher a pink slip while the administration getting raised, vote for me. If you want to, know, to see more diversity in the police department, in the school department, at the city hall, vote for me because I'm here to serve you because you deserve better than that. You deserve change. <coughs> you deserve the change within the voice. You deserve our voice for you. Thank you very much. Give me your vote in September 27th.
not good at, you know, I'm not a salesman, I'm not good at selling things. I, I just feel I bring a lot to the table when it comes to technology. I, I'm currently a database programmer at Brigham and Women's Hospital. I take the train out of my tell station every day into work and come back home do my thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying meeting everybody here and, and you know, hoping to earn your vote. And I guarantee if you vote for me, I'll make you proud. And, you know, we'll restore dignity in Brockton. First of all, thank you again for being here tonight. I'm Bob Sullivan. I proudly serve as a concert lodge, and I am asking for your vote on Tuesday. Polls are open at 7 a.m. They close at 8 p.m. I serve uh, all seven wards, all 28 precincts for 10 years, uh, and I serve two of those years as a council president. But you know what? It's not, it's, it's not really it doesn't matter how long I serve. It's what I've done. Have I been productive? Have I been dedicated? Have I been vocal? Have I always gone to bat for the citizens, the people? I have, because I'm your voice at City Hall. I don't always get along, but I do the right thing. Reputation and family, the two most important things in my life. I went to bat for the seniors and the veterans. I had an ordinance uh, enacted in the city of Brockton. Now, seniors and veterans can volunteer. They get a price reduction on their real estate taxes. I also went to bat and said, listen, let's do a fiscal measure. Think outside the box. Save the city hundreds of thousand of dollars a year. What I did was I said, buy the streetlights. We did that for 44000 We saved 650000 another half million last year. So when you go to the polls, if you're a Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent, please do your civic duty. Go to the polls on Tuesday. I'm number one on the ballot. Robert Sullivan, proudly serving Concert Lodge, City of Brockton. Thank you. God bless you all. I'm number seven on the ballot, and I, I, I want to thank everyone for coming out here tonight to this forum. And uh, I, I think we've all seen uh, over the course of the last few months. Uh, I've been I've been uh, I've been knocking on doors and meeting people since since April. Uh, we've all seen through the course of the last few forums that we're all people who are really concerned about the future of the city. I think the choice is who do you think is the most equipped to to get the most accomplished. I, I believe I'm, I'm I'm equipped to get that done. I'm a, I'm a believe, I believe that I have I have a vision and. Uh, and the passion to get things to get things done in the city of Brockton. I ask for your vote uh, on uh, September 22nd. And uh, Craig, again, Craig Pina, number seven on the ballot. I'm going to echo my colleagues and friends in government and thank the NAACP and Temple Beth Muna for holding this forum. Thank you all for coming and thank you for watching at home when this airs again. My name is Shana Marie Barnes. I will be number eight on your September 22nd ballot. I am running for re-election to the Brockton City Council. I currently serve as one of your, uh, your four city councils at large. I have had an amazing first term. I think I, ha I will have completed my first term successfully. Um, I came in with no promises, and I'm making no promises now. I'm not in law enforcement. I'm not going to be fighting crime. I'm not in economic development and business. I'm going to leave that to our, our redevelopment authority and to our executive offices and make sure that I work with them and work with my colleagues to make sure that we bring the appropriate things here that we can support. That's what we need to do. We need to be more supportive of what we do in our city. That's my job, to bring what you want to have uh, done in City Hall and in the city, bring it to that chamber. Contact me, Shana Marie Barnes, number eight on your ballot, September 22nd. It's been my pleasure to serve you thus far, and I look forward to doing it again. Thank you. I'm Lynn Farwell, and I have been blessed to serve as your mayor. I've served 10 years on the school committee. I served on the police department. I'd like to serve you again, and someone asked me why run. Unfortunately, the same issues we confronted when I was mayor have circled back around. When I went into office, the city was almost bankrupt. When I left office, we had about $8 million in reserves. We managed our programs carefully. We watched every city expenditure to make sure we didn't waste money. Now, I don't have an answer for every problem in this city, and I'm not <coughs> going to stand up here and pretend that I do, but I'll take each issue that comes before the city council. I'll listen to all of you from any neighborhood, whether you've been here or 
month or a hundred years, I'll form the, the best possible decision I can, and I'll make a vote on the City Council that will move Brockton forward. I appreciate your support in the past. I'm number three in the ballot, and I would sincerely appreciate your support again on September 22nd. first set of our forum. The next one will be the mayorality candidates. Uh, my name is Leonard Alkins. I'm a lifelong resident because I've been here longer than I lived in Boston. Uh, I've raised my family here. And uh, I'm also interested in what the candidates have to say. I thank you for being <coughs> courteous and allowing the candidates to speak. And I encourage you to engage them all the way up to and past the primary. It's important that they hear your voice. Thank you, counselors. And you may have a seat and stay if you wish or move on. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank the candidates who are running for mayor. I know you had a busy schedule tonight, and it's not over after this forum for many of you. So I ask that you listen to the instructions on the forum. There will be two questions asked of each candidate. You will have two minutes to respond to each question. After those two questions are asked of all four, you will have a two minute timetable to give your reason as to why people should vote for you to be mayor of the city of Brockton. The panelists who will be giving you your questions this evening is Lenora Martin. Leona, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so the first question, um, and um, Mayor Carpenter, I'll address you first. Uh, crime in the city of Brockton has increased over the past few years and doesn't seem to be improving. What strategies do you feel we should use as a large suburban city to decrease the crime so people feel safe about the city in which we live? Well, first of all, I just want to... Is it to get this off? <coughs> well, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much uh, to both uh, the Temple and to the NAACP for hosting this uh, forum for us this evening. Uh, I had the pleasure to be here on Sunday to speak with the Men's Fellowship here at the Temple, and I think uh, I'm here with mixed emotions tonight as we look forward uh, to the merger very soon uh, of the Temple with uh, Temple Beth Am and, and Randolph, and uh, this Temple's had a great history here in the city since 1971. Uh, the question uh, regarding crime, we're doing it. Uh, we are uh, investing in technology, uh, we've done that with new fingerprinting technology. We are uh, installing video cameras across the city. Uh, and most recently today, we went live with ShotSpot, a five square miles of a gunshot detection system that will greatly enhance the police department's ability to respond to a gunshot incident. Uh, it takes more than just investing in technology. This morning, again, we had a successful raid and arrested a uh, crack dealer. And uh, the additional activity, we have doubled the annual number of search uh, warrants for drug raids uh, this past year over the year before because we've added three detectives to the narcotics unit. We've added two detectives to the gang unit. So we are uh, we're assigning the resources where they need it most. And uh, we do need more boots on the ground, and we've been consistent in saying that all along. We have nine cadets at the police academy right now that will be graduating on October 30th and sworn in on November 2nd as police officers. 
We had planned uh, to hire six more. We had, we had requested a list from civil service for six more, uh, but the day before yesterday, I directed, uh, Chief Crowley and I directed our personnel director to double that number to 12. So we are going to uh, add 12 officers in addition to the nine at the academy. And so that in a space of less than a year, we will have added 21 new police officers uh, to the force. So uh, we are coming at this from every angle. We need both short-term and long-term solutions. Uh, and we're working on both. So everything from working with young people at the front end to re-entry programs at the back end. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to fight this fight. We're fighting crime, and we're fighting the fight every day. There is no more important issue in this city Fine. than public safety. No, I don't need you to read. Okay. I don't need you, but thank you. Okay. Um, one, I want to thank the NAACP. Um, NAACP is a very important organization to me, myself. Um, I'm actually second cousins to Malcolm X, a great civil rights leader. Um, let's be honest, you guys. You can either We can either be politicians and tell you what you want to hear, or we can tell you the truth. We can tell you what you guys know really is taking place in Proctor right now. Right now, we have to worry every time our children go outside to play. When, my, when our son, my wife is here, my daughter's here, when our son goes to play, I go, see, we have to be concerned for our son. And that's the truth. That is the, the dead truth in Brockton right now. The streets are out of control. We have shootings every day, just about, some days, several shootings. Um, I had to watch, which some of you did, watch the video of the, the young man who was shot. In video, you know, on video, right by the high school. I mean, that's the reality that we're facing. And it's great that we want to fight crime, which I agree. Public safety is the number one priority. That was what the current mayor ran on last year. And you're finding out it's not that easy. It's not. But the problem is, is we're fighting crime. And again, that's important. But we need to start doing things for these kids. We need to start looking at ways to prevent crime from happening. We are being too reactionary. Okay, we're not being proactive. What are we doing for our young people? What opportunities are we giving our young people? Again, we can say what's, what's good for TV, or we can say the truth. The truth is what you guys all know. Hundreds of bullets on the streets. People, seven murders. This is reality. It's reality. It's reality, thank you. It's reality for my wife and I to worry about our children when we go outside to play. And, and again, our young people that are here today, we need to be proactive in what we do in this city. And also, it's great to invest in all this technology. Yes, we need to invest in technology. We need to invest in people. Okay? We have a shot spotter, which is an upgrade, but we don't have the police to be able to react, react to it. Invest in people. Okay? I'm here because I'm worried about my family and I'm worried about yours. Thank you.
There's a lot of wasted money going on right now where we could have hired more police officers and increased the technology. Right now, we're a reactive, uh, reactive team. We have to be proactive team. I'd like to see the computers go back into, into the, uh, into the uh, police cruisers where they can spot and read the, uh, the license plates. So we can tell, when we can tell all the police officers, they can tell where, the, where or if you have an li expired license wanted for anything. They can, that computer right there can tell you right away they'll get you right off the street. That's a tool that we can use as proactive, not a reactive tool such as the shot spot. Thank you. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you very much for having us up here. And uh, as far as police protection, I think the police are doing a terrific job are we understaffed? Yes. Do I think we need more cops? Yes, absolutely. But we need more Indians and not, not, not more chiefs. <laughs> but I know that's required. But at the same time, I think we need more community effort. We need more com community participation. You know, I would like to see block moms come back. I'd like to go ahead and see uh, neighborhood watches yeah. come back. I mean, people need to go ahead and not be afraid to go ahead and report the crimes that they're seeing because you're, you're witnessing this stuff, but you're afraid of retaliation, and it shouldn't be. This is exactly what the criminals want, you know. They, they want, want you to go ahead and be afraid to go ahead and report it, and people need to go ahead and realize that, and that is my vision, and I, I you know, I'm, I'm totally for a neighborhood watch, I'm totally for block bombs. I'm totally for a, just improvement and more community accessibility and community turn around being more active because that's what it takes to build a city. Thank you. Okay, so the second question is, um, do you support the purchase of a water plant? If so, why? If not, why? Again, I have no problems with going first. First on the battle, please. Um, I'm 100% against the, the purchase of the desalinization, because if that's what we're talking about. Um, it's a horrible deal, horrible deal. Uh, the city wants us to, or the, the mayor wants to purchase this for $88 million, which is well above its current worth. Um, and, uh, you know, people need to understand that we're going to take out a bond on this. So that money could turn into, will turn into approximately 110 to 150,000 anywhere, I mean 150 million anywhere in that area that we would be paid, we would have to pay over the 20 to 30 year period. So we're going to be on the hook for this plant that we don't need. We need to challenge it. There's been serious breaches with this contract. My legal advisor, who I trust, has looked at it. We need to at least challenge it. And that's what the current mayor said he would do last time. At least challenge it. We haven't challenged it. We've accepted it and said, no, we're going to purchase it. I mean, if, if I go to, the, to McDonald's and get something on the dollar menu, I'm not buying it for $2. It doesn't make any sense. That's what we want to do. You want to buy a facility that's been priced at less than what, it, what we're talking about four times. It, it just doesn't make sense. I would definitely be willing to challenge that, and that's something I'm planning on doing from day one. Um, and if need be, we restructure or whatever, but it needs to be challenged. So I am against the purchase of the desalinization plant. Thank you.
So that's not in, on my page. It's not even on my radar. I would not entertain that at all. Uh, I, my plan is to have the state take control of this plant where we can ma manufacture or a committee such as the MWRA to purchase this plant or take it over where we can go in and pay as we, as we pull out of there, as we pay as you go, basically. So this purchase of this plant uh, two years ago was $60 million. I asked the CFO, where's the money coming from? Where's, the, where's this price tag coming from? He had no idea. He thought $30 million was excessive. So now the CFO is telling everybody and all the counselors here that $88 million is a steal. <laughs> yes, it's a steal for the company who's trying to sell it. They're stealing from us, the residents of the city of Rock. I will not entertain selling, uh, buying this, pro uh, this, this project at all. And I, th I agree with Mr. Taggart. There has been some flaws in the contract, which we should go after. But to purchase this is, is uh, quite honestly uh, bad for the city of Brockton, and you're going to be paying off millions more than you're doing right now. Thank you. Yeah, I quit here, deal. I, I turn around. I just feel that's overly excessive, and I don't think that is a good investment for the city. Uh, I look at the town of East Bridgewater, who just recently had a water main break, and they drew water off of that plant, and they didn't turn around and say that they were going to go ahead and buy it. Now, why are we going to purchase? Are we going into the water business? Why would we purchase something for $88 million? You know, I just feel that's excessive and unnecessary. That money can be diverted to the school system. It can be diverted to uh, wherever. It could be put more patrolmen on the streets. I mean, it could, it could be used in so many different ways. And I just find that excessive. And I, I don't think I ever would have signed a 20-year contract, maybe a five-year contract, if possible. You know, but I mean, I don't understand the terms of, you know, you know what what the agreement was and how you were supposed, you know, whether whether we maintain into signing a 20-year contract. But I would have never agree to that. Thank you. Well, I think it's important to clear up a lot of uh, misleading statements uh, that have been made in this discussion. Uh, so let's start off with, first of all, uh, I didn't make the deal. I inherited this bad deal. And my goal is to uh, put the city in a better position so that the ratepayers in the city are not wasting as much money as they are right now. The city cuts a check for over half a million dollars a month to Aquaria, whether we use any water or not. Uh, in terms of the deal, there is no deal. A deal has not been made. There's a letter of intent. It's the very first step in a process that may or may not lead to a deal. It outlines the parameters of what a deal might look like, and it sets a number of conditions and contingencies which are all on the seller to show us. We need to establish what the cost would be if we had to move the pipeline, uh, around the South Coast Rail. We also need the plant needs improvements uh, in order to get up to the 5 million gallons a day that it's supposed to be able to produce. Right now it can only produce 3.5 million gallons a day. In our letter of intent, all of those millions of dollars of improvements would be on Aquaria before we would consider the purchase. But let's think about where we stand right now. Despite having paid all this money over the last 6.5 or 7 years, the 13 years of payments we have remaining is over $100 million. We're going to pay another 100 and some odd million dollars additionally going forward. I'm trying to look at a way that's a better deal for the city. And it's like buying a house or renting a house. What no one is considering in these numbers is what's the value of the plant at the end of 20 years that we own. Because the way we're doing it right now, we give them another over $100 million you know what we've got in 13 years? Nothing. We've got rent receipts, and we still need a second source of water. Yeah. If we don't, the hazard of digital value is somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 million dollars, right. plus the value of the improvements. Thank you.
uh, why should we vote for you? And why don't we start with uh, Christopher Hockley? Hi, Christopher Hockley. <coughs> Been a lifelong resident here for 53 years. I've seen my community turn around and rise, and I've seen it fall. And right now it's falling. And it's upsetting to me. You know, I, you know, I just can't get over the way the crime rate has gone up. And people are just generally afraid to go ahead and report it. And it's beyond me because I sit on my front porch and I tell you what, if I see a crime happening, I'll call up. And people have to realize they, they don't need to go ahead and call up and give them their name. They can call up anonymously. And they can just call up and turn around and witness a crime and turn around and report it. Because this is a big factor. It means a big problem in the city. And people have to go ahead and correct it as a community. I mean, you all want to go ahead and call yourself community activists. Well, be active. Be part of the community. And go ahead and do your, you know, your simple duty. This is why I want to go ahead and be mayor. Because I feel like I can go ahead and get things done. I feel like I can go ahead and contribute to the community, and I'd appreciate your support on the 22nd. And I thank you very much. Uh, next up, Jacob Taggart. Why should we vote for you? All right, so I've had prepared speeches, and what I've found is just to be yourself. So I'm going to tell you guys a story I just, I just told um, at our last forum at for that big Procter and Faith community had. And it's a story about basically something my dad told me, my daddy told me when I was a young person in Brockton and, and how I feel about what Brockton is and what Brockton can be. My dad grew up in Mississippi, small town in Mississippi, 12 brothers and sisters in a shack. Moved up here and married my mom. They were together, buried right now at Melrose. Um, my dad told me when I was about eight years old, we were driving around Brockton and I used to love and enjoy taking rides with my dad. And I was riding probably through DW or somewhere. And my dad, I said to my dad, I said, Daddy, I said, when I get older, I want to be a doctor. As a kid, that's what I wanted to be. I said, I want to be a doctor, Dad. And my, I said, would you be proud of me? Because I wanted my father to be proud of me. And my dad said, boy, I don't care if you go around Brockton. It's a true story. Anybody that knows my dad will tell you. I don't care if you go around Brockton and collect every can in the city as long as you go and do your best. I said, huh? I want to be a doctor. Why would you want me to collect cans, Dad? He goes, Jacob, you don't get it. You're not going to get it right now, but you will when you get older. What my dad was telling me is no matter what you do, you always strive to be the best. And I've lived here my whole life. I love this city. And I personally, I've seen what this city can be. I've seen what our young people can accomplish when we believe in them. I believe in Brockton. I believe Brockton is the best city in the state of Massachusetts. And I believe in all of you. My name is Jacob L. Taggart Jr. I am running to become the next mayor of the city of champions. I'm number two on the ballot. I ask for your vote. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Next up, Jacob Well, I don't think I'll use my uh, usual closing statement uh, either. Uh, I'm running on my record. I've been your mayor for 20 months, and uh, I don't think anyone thought our administration would change the world in 20 months. But we've started a lot of good things. And I won't take the time to talk about the jobs we're creating, the businesses we're bringing to the city, how we're cleaning up neighborhoods, how we've tackled the foreclosure crisis, uh, or any of the other great things that we've started in our first 20 months. I think tonight this forum is being hosted here in a Jewish temple by the NAACP. Uh, I think I would like to mention my track record on improving and increasing diversity in this city during the first 20 months in terms of appointments to city boards and commissions, in terms of hiring, in terms of opening up government to every community in this city. I mentioned that police class is graduating on October 30th nine officers that were selected. Five are bilingual, seven out of the nine are minorities, 
in the history of the city is the first time the first ever minority majority class of police officers in the city and i'm proud of that two weeks ago i sent up eight nominations to the city council for various city boards and commissions all important appointments eight eight out of the eight were from the various minority communities in this city we are proactively looking to recruit highly qualified individuals from all the communities in this city because i think perhaps that's one of the mayor's biggest challenges and that is to take the strength of the diversity of the city pull us all together so that we can work together to solve these challenges we face city government can't do it alone we need churches we need families we need schools and we need every family working with us to ensure the safety of this city and i'm proud of my record with diversity i'm running on my record in the first 12 uh, 20 months we're off to a good start we're off to a good start i ask you for an opportunity to continue to work for it. I'm running on my experience as a city councilor, as a former city councilor. I was there for eight years. I know the intricates of the way the city is supposed to run, and I know why and how it's not being run correctly. I was a council president, president for 2010, uh, which my my colleagues they nominated me, knowing that I, if the mayor did take off, that I would be serving as the mayor while the mayor was out of town. So. With the experience, that's why I'm here. I'm also here because I'm passionate about this city. We don't have a good city right now. I'm sorry. It's crime is up right now. Oh, go ahead. Crime is up right now. I love this city, but we are going, we are going down the drain right now if this administration continues. Uh, bond rating has gone, has decreased. Uh, police officers are not getting what they need to do. The, the, pro, the programs they have in place for our police officers to try to help them out are not working. When are you going to realize that? And you're going to make some changes. Then hopefully it's the residents of the city of Rockton will make the changes on September 22nd and elect some it's the two, hopefully one of the three here, and besides the mayor, to, to go forward with this. We need help. The city of Rockton desperately needs the help. I have the experience to help out the city. I have the passion to help out the city. And I love this city. I, it's really, really affects me uh, mentally and personally that we uh, watch this crime and the shootings go up. You know, I was told these, these crimes, is it a crime where they shoot or is it just an incident? It's a crime. Don't let anyone put the spit on it. The city is not doing well right now, financially or with the crime. So I hope on the, tw on the 22nd, September 22nd, next Tuesday, I'm number one on the ballot. Chris McMillan, please vote for me. Thank you. That concludes the second portion of our forum. Again, I want to thank the audience for being courteous, allowing the candidates to give their opinions, and I encourage you to engage them all the way up to the election on Tuesday and after Tuesday. It doesn't end with an election. Your participation will make the difference as to where the city of Brockton is going to be in the next few years. So again, thank you for your participation. Thank you, uh, to Temple. Uh, Mr. Temple, person. I'd like to bring the president of the Brockton branch of the NAACP, Steve Bernard, to give closing statements. this evening, the residents of the city of Brockton, who are conscientious about who you elect to serve you, to serve all. Our thanks also goes to the many candidates who are vying for office, incumbents and candidates for the first 
first time. It's a, creative, it's a courageous task to run for office. It takes money, it takes passion. And we want to say thank you. Thank you, mayoral candidates. Thank you, city council candidates, council at large candidates, school committee candidates. This is our city. We know that you love your city and we appreciate your running. A very special thanks to Temple Fethamuna, this beautiful building <coughs> is being sold. A brotherhood that's been here since 1951 has made a decision to uh, possibly merge with another brotherhood. The demographics of the city are changing. We want to make certain that the demographics uh, in the future of the city are positive such that maybe the Jewish community will grow again here in the city. So Temple Beth Amuna, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank all the members of the NAACP, and again, I thank you all residents for coming out tonight. And don't forget to vote on September 22nd and encourage all of your friends and family.